This is the video lecture on deductions for AGI. In a previous video, we talked about the tax formula, and I said that there were certain deductions that were classified as for AGI, and those are the ones that we're going to focus on in this lecture. Now, first of all, to distinguish between for versus from AGI deductions, there is a difference. The deductions for AGI those are taken before the calculation of AGI. So in other words, these deductions actually help us determine what the adjusted gross income is going to be. And these can be taken whether the taxpayer takes the standard deduction or itemizes. So the idea is that any deductions that we have that fall under that category, it's a great category to be in because we're going to get to take advantage of those deductions whether we itemize or not. Whereas the from AGI deductions, we're only going to be able to take advantage of those if we itemize. And we're going to have an entire separate video lecture later on just on those types of deductions. Now what are the major four AGI deductions? First of all, alimony. Any alimony that a person pays, they get to deduct that. Of course, the person who received the alimony, they have to report it as income. But payment of alimony, that's always a 4 AGI deduction. Also, business expenses. If the person has a business, and that's a question that we're going to address later on, but if they do indeed have a business, then the expenses of that business are a 4 AGI deduction. Also, losses. And these could be business losses. These could be losses on sale of property. That's a deduction. Also, contributions to certain retirement plans. We talked about that in an earlier video. We might contribute to an IRA. We might contribute to a 401k. And if we do that, we're able to deduct that from our taxes. We don't have to pay tax on that. And of course, in another video, we talked about the social objectives that sometimes are trying to be accomplished with taxes and this is a good example of that you know why do they allow us to deduct the contributions to retirement because it encourages people to save for retirement so that's the social objective moving expenses and also one half of self-employment taxes because of course those of you who have had payroll accounting know that a self-employed person has to double up on Social Security and Medicare. So all of these, if a person has paid for any of these, they get to deduct these as a 4 AGI deduction. And the great thing about it is if you have any of these, you're going to get to take advantage of them whether you itemize or not. Now, we talked about business deductions, and I said provided that the person does in fact have a business. And I said we would address this. The idea is, when is it actually a business? What's the difference between a, an actual business versus an investment or just something that's a hobby? And that is a question that comes up. Because if something is merely a hobby, then the expenses associated with it are personal expenses. Personal expenses are not deductible. So the real question is, first of all, is it a for-profit activity? Is it something where the person is actually seeking out profits? And secondly, is it an activity that has been conducted in a very professional manner? And I admit that those classifications are sometimes a little bit of a gray area. For example, you know, what if someone deals with antiques? You know, a lot of people like to go out and collect antiques. They go out and they shop for these antiques. They purchase them. They clean them up. They turn around and sell them. Well, is that just a hobby that the person has? Or are they in the business of selling antiques? And again, is it an activity for profit? You know, is the goal behind this to buy these things and turn them around and sell them at a higher price to make a profit? 
or is it merely just for the enjoyment of going out and finding these antiques? And also, is it conducted in a professional manner? You know, is this something that a person does on the weekends occasionally, or is this something that a person devotes a lot of time to? Do they have business cards? Do they have ads in the paper? You know, that insinuates it's more of a business. But I agree, it could be a very gray area, and it could be an area that would be up to individual judgment about whether or not something constitutes a hobby or a business. And then, of course, you have another issue with businesses, and that is business versus personal. And this is an area that is rife for potential abuse. You know, the idea is that if I do have a business, yes, I can deduct the expenses, but is it a business expense? You know, if I go to Staples and buy paper or a computer, am I buying that for my business or am I buying that to just use for personal reasons? If it's a personal expense, it's not deductible. If it's a business expense, it is. So that's a gray area. And of course, one way to uh, provide documentation there is to save receipts and to show what was bought, when it was bought, and that could provide some documentation, but again, it's an area that is open for potential abuse. The next type of deduction that could potentially present a problem would be bribes versus kickbacks. And what the IRS says about this is that bribes are not deductible, but kickbacks are deductible. So that then raises the question, what is the difference between a bribe and a kickback? Well, a kickback, that is a payment that you make to someone for promotion, for advertising, for word of mouth, or for referrals. Whereas a bribe, that is a payment made to someone who's in a position of authority. So to give an example, you know, maybe I have a uh, car dealership. And maybe I have a policy that for any person who goes out there and recommends my car dealership to another customer, I'll pay them $100 for doing that. That's a kickback. That's perfectly legal, and it's deductible as an expense. Or maybe I have a restaurant, and I tell my customers, hey, if you'll bring in some business, if you go out there and promote and bring some people in, I'll give you a kickback for doing that. That's allowed. But if it's a payment made to someone who has a position of authority, that's not allowed. That's actually a bribe. So an example of that would be someone who has, say, a, uh, a restaurant and they have a health inspector and the health inspector comes in and they're going to fail you on the inspection. So to keep the restaurant open, you say, okay, I'll give you $500 if you don't fail me. You know, that's a bribe. That's an illegal activity, and the IRS considers that not to be a deductible expense. Another area would be fines and penalties. Sometimes, in the course of operating a business, you might be levied with a fine or a penalty. Problem there is, it's a double punishment. And how is it a double punishment? Well, not only do you have to pay the fine, but you're not allowed to deduct that as a business expense. So you have to pay the tax on that money even though you didn't get that money. You had to spend it. So in that regard, a fine or a penalty is really a double punishment, and it's not considered to be a deduction. Then you have political contributions. A lot of times, businesses will contribute money uh, to a political candidate, or to a campaign, or they might even spend money lobbying. And if they do that, the question comes up, is it deductible? Well, it is only deductible if you meet two criteria. And the criteria would be, it must be a local issue, and it must be directly related to your business. So for example, if you own a restaurant, and the city in which your restaurant is located is going to raise taxes on restaurant and food establishments. Well, if you campaigned against that, that is a 
business expense that could be deductible because it's a local issue and it's directly related to your business. Whereas if you contributed, say, to a presidential campaign for the United States of America, nothing is there to keep you from doing that, but you can't deduct that as a business expense because it's not local and it's not directly related to the business.